This video is about Forest Plot, the package that's um, one of the things that you can get in R. I'm going to show you how to install and invoke the package, and then I'm going to illustrate it with uh, stacking of effect sizes, and I'm going to show you a little bit about controlling the appearance of the plot. And I wanted to output it to PowerPoint and it doesn't look that good by itself, so um, I changed it a little bit and I'll show you how to do that. There's a, a really good um, web page that's shown on the URL at the bottom of this slide, so you can go there and get lots of information as well. All right, um, so here we have our studio, and uh, so if you don't already have Forest Plot, then you'd want to um, run this particular command, install packages forest plot. I've already done that, so I don't have to do that now. But when I want to use forest plot, I've got to call it up, and I do that by saying library forest plot, and I run that. And you can see it says uh, it's loading it, and now it's done that. I also want to use uh, Excel to read data, so I'm going to load that and uh, it's done that. Okay, so now um, what I'm actually going to do is read some data from uh, an Excel file. So first I'm going to grab the file. So initial data gets file choose and file choose will let it determine where the file or let me tell it where the file is. So here I'm going to go to my desktop and the thing I want is Refor, so real data for a forest plot. So I'm going to open that, and it says it's done it. And I'm going to put it in a data set or an object called creds. And so I'm going to read that Excel file from my initial data, and it's in the first sheet. And I want to see what it is. OK, so it read it, and now it's printing it out. And here you can see what it is. And um, the way that the program works is you create a text file for the label. So here I've got the author, and I've got the um, number of studies in the meta-analysis, and here I've got the correlations. So these things are now bound together in uh, columns into a, a, a text file called tabs. All right, so I'm going to run that and print it. Okay, so you can see, uh, well actually <clears throat> for this particular, um, when I when I did this for a publication I, and for sharing with people, I, I had the um, correlations in there, but I've taken it out for, for this. So um, I've commented out and you see that I've got the author and the number of studies or the number of effect sizes for my uh, meta-analyses here. So remember, I have eight of these things, uh, but I'm going to want to put in um, a summary as well. So I'm going to have set up here nine rows, and uh, I'm going to set it up so that the very first one is going to be missing, and then two through nine. So uh, I've got the mean to be that Higgins mean, and I've got the lower for the Higgins low, and I've got the upper for the Higgins upper. So I've got NA in the first row, and then the two through nine has got those uh, values for the uh, the mean, the low end, and the high end of the credibility intervals, or the, you can think about them as uh, confidence intervals, if you like. Okay, and then the second one, I've done the same thing. Here I'm going to Higgins Z, and I've got the first one is missing and then I've set my data into the mean, lower, and upper. And then for the Schmidt and Hunter, my third one, I've got here again, I set it to one through nine and uh, I've made it missing. And then I put the data in through two through nine. Okay. This uh, PDF here was when I was um, outputting to a, a PDF file directly. So instead of printing over here in uh, my you know, quartz output. I I put it into a PDF for um, for another purpose. 
So I've got that commented out right now. So here we go. <clears throat> Here's the command uh, forest plot, and it's going to work because I invoked the library. Tabs is the name of that file that has this label stuff in it. Um, this is uh, controlling the size and shape of the ticks, the X labels, and the uh, the labels of the studies. So um, this is how big CEX, how big I'm going to have them. Right now they're set at 0.8. I can make them bigger or smaller by adjusting these. Uh, Legend is going to appear at the top, and I've got the Schmidt and Hunter, Higgins T, and Higgins Z as my labels. And uh, I'm going to have them in triplets, and so my um, I've got uh, I'm drawing uh, one as a normal. It's going to be uh, square, and then I've got a diamond here, and then I've got a circle. So I'm going to be able to see the different shapes for the different um, methods that I used. And then um, is a summary. So I've got a, a a summary effect size, and then I've got eight uh, um, different uh, values here. So uh, you can see this rep means to do it eight times. Uh, for the mean, I've I've got the um, I'm going to bind together in columns the Schmidt and Hunter mean, the Higgins and and the Higgins um, correlation, the Higgins Z. And for the lower, I'm doing the same thing. And for the upper, I'm doing the same thing. This clip is for the limits, the bottom and the top of the graph. And this is in standardized mean difference. And so that's about as small and big as these things get. If, it, if the confidence interval or the credibility interval falls outside these limits, then you'll see an arrow as opposed to the end of the confidence interval. Here I've set up um, for my uh, confidence interval the line type, one, two, three, so you're going to see straight and then dashed. And then uh, here I've got for my line width for my confidence interval two, because when I leave that out, the lines are quite thin and they don't show up well in uh, PowerPoint. My colors are blue, green, and dark red, so that's my, um, I'm going to get colors for each of my triplets. Vertices is true is going to give me ends to my wings on my uh, forest plot. X lab is for the label, so it's going to be a standardized mean difference. New page is true. Box size controls the, the uh, size of the symbol for the plot. Uh, I'm going to show you grid equals true, which is the default, or you can turn it off with false. Uh, and then here I have um, told it that I want to have the grid appear at minus one, minus a half, zero, point five, and so far these will be vertical lines through my forest plot. And here I've got um, line type is two, and uh, so that gives it going to be dashed, and then the width of those lines is going to be two, which is going to make it a little thicker. Okay, and that's it uh, for the publication. I turned off the colors because uh, I needed it to be black for publication. So I'm now going to, what did I, I ran that. I don't think I ran this. So let's go run all that. Okay, so far so good. And now let's run the forest plot. Okay, it ran. And now here it appears over here. And I'm going to hit zoom. And I'm going to put green to make it big. And you can see uh, this is what it looks like. So I've got my labels here. Schmidt 100 is the, um, the default, the square. And then here's the diamond in green. And here's the circle in dark red. And you can see that I have um, the wings for my effect sizes. are. Uh, this is a line type 1. This is line type 2. This is line type 3. And uh, they're in the nice colors and you you can see how they are distinguished one from another so you can see which one it is so here's the um, first meta-analysis that had 36 studies and here's the summary effect and the prediction interval for Schmidt and Hunter versus Higgins T versus Higgins Z and so um, you can pretty well see I hope <laughs> um, here's a standardized mean difference of zero and so um, 
you know, you can see that for Stewart and Roth, the Schmidt Hunter uh, credibility interval did not cross zero, but the, both the Higgins ones did. Okay, so that's um, that's what it looks like, and I spent some time to get it to look like that. Um, let me get rid of that. All right, I'm going to show you now what happens if I get rid of this control for grid <clears throat> and just use the default. So here's the forest plot with just the default. All right, and you can see that uh, it's you know it's the same plot, but now you it's very difficult to see the grid lines. And if I import this into PowerPoint and then show it to people, they're not going to be able to see those lines. These still look quite good. Uh, and if I ran the default, there these are also very thin, so the line width of two makes them thick and easy to see. Um, I can change the size of all these guys in here. And uh, I like this because it's it, you can see the width of these things. Um, you can also, there's a command that I don't have in there for the width of this. The default is to give the plot part whatever space is left after you give it the labels. So that's why I took out that, um, that third column because it was crowding this. If I put it back in, you'll see what happens. Um, but I'm not going to do that because <laughs> that would take a long time. So I'm going to leave this grid on and I'm going to change these to be ones so that you'll see what happens when they're a little bit larger. Okay, let's zoom it. Let's uh, make it big. So now you see the um, the author and the number of studies are more visible, but it's crowding the uh, the plot itself. Actually, export this and do it in PowerPoint was I did a number of things. I I saved it as image and noticed that um, JPEG is fine. You can pick a directory. Uh, I picked my desktop to save it, uh, and then you can pick you know, whatever file name you want, rplot or anything you like. Uh, and then it sets up the uh, width and height for you. And um, it turns out that these are not very, <laughs> they're not very good uh, values. Uh, the ones I finally ended up with were about 900 and 700. And I'll show you what that uh, looks like. This is what it looks like if you just output um, the thing without adjusting the uh, the number of pixels there. So as you can see, it cuts off part of it and the resolution is poor. This is uh, what happens when you output as a PDF and then import the PDF. And you can see the resolution is good, but the the, the graph is awfully stretched. So it's it's not bad, uh, but it doesn't, it's aesthetically not that nice. And then uh, here's what it looks like when you output it at about 900 and 700. So this is this is not bad. This is I would say acceptable for a PowerPoint. So when I when I show this, you'll be able to read the text and you'll be able to see comparison in the triplets and clearly see whether things fall on one side of the the uh, reference lines or not. Okay, so that's what I wanted to tell you about um, the package. Uh, forest plot. This is it's uh, it can do you know a regular forest plot. It gives you a lot of control over the elements in the forest plot. So if you're going to create one and give it as a presentation, this is a, a really nice package to have. And also, it it helps you uh, or may help you with uh, um, publications.